everyone. Thank you much. Thank you so much for taking part in our event. This is Rafael Rolon from NACAD. We're so excited to have you all join us in our last event of Mental Disabilities Awareness Month 2024. For this event, we're so excited to have the artist of our piece for this year, Lee Waters, join us. Um, she will be interviewed by our very own Abigail Lewis. As you see, ASL interpretation will be provided. This will also be uh, shared on our social media next week. So don't threaten if you cannot listen to it right now. It will be posted on YouTube next week. Thank you guys again for joining us. We're so excited to have this great event to close out the month. Um, as you know, our theme for this year was a world of opportunities. So we are so excited that we continue to have this conversation, not just during the month of March, but throughout this whole year. Um, but with that being said, thank you guys all again for taking part. And Abigail, I will pass it on to you to kick us off. Okay, awesome. Um, so, hi everyone. My name is Abigail, and I am a public policy intern working at NACDD. Today, I have the opportunity to interview Lee Waters, who is not only an educator but also an accomplished artist. So, Lee, it is truly a pleasure to have you here with us today. To start off, could you please tell us? Well, could you please tell our audience a bit about yourself? Okay, thank you for having me. Hello, everybody. So I have been, um, well, first of all, to share my disability. Um, I am hard of hearing since birth, and I uh, wear hearing aids, and I primarily use spoken English, but I do use ASL. So I'm very happy to see we have an interpreter today so that we can really make this accessible for all of our wonderful deaf folks out there. So I um, am an educator. I am a teacher of the deaf and hard of hearing. And I am now in my 32nd year of teaching. And that also includes five years as a director of a state school for the deaf and hard of hearing. So it is something very near and dear to me in terms of working with others who experience hearing loss and um, also utilizing ASL as a way to communicate and share that culture. Oh. Sorry, I was muted. Um, awesome, that's great to hear. Uh, so my next question would be, what inspired you to pursue a career in art or you know, to become an artist? Well, um... It was not something that I had really focused solely on just being an artist. It's really just part of who I am, I think, in terms of my outlook in life. And I did have some earlier influences. My mom is an artist and uh, my dad was an artist. So there was a lot of that in my life and being around like-minded people to see art day in and day out. Um, but I would have to say my mom was really my biggest influence. Um, I did not go to school formally as I did for my career in education, but I really believe that everybody, um, don't let the fact that you may not have a formal education in art, you know, a degree in art to keep you from creating art and seeing it and enjoying it and feeling it. So just put that out of the way and just be a wonderful, happy um, person in the arts, whatever you may do as an observer or as a creator. Wow, that, yeah, that's really great. Um, good stuff. Um, so my next question, just kind of shifting gears a little bit, is asking about the DDAM. Um, so the theme was a world of opportunities. Now, my question is, um, how do you interpret the theme, a world of opportunities in your own work? Right. So the in terms of opportunity, always, I believe, drives um, from the source of accessibility. So whether there's opportunity given to you or you have to go out and seek it um, is really the key. So what does that mean, opportunity? It means having accessibility. It means breaking down barriers based on your disability or helping others with their disabilities. Um, barrier, um, oppression, any of that 
we need to eradicate and just get it out of the way and really get to the heart of who we are as people and not really letting our disability define us. It's part of us that we can share in a very constructive, positive way, but we shouldn't use it to define us in a way that adds to the oppression or causes miscommunication with others when we really, what we really want to do, everybody, those with disabilities or without working in the field, really need to help others to understand disabilities and how we can live harmoniously with each other, professionally, personally, and not have these barriers. So when you remove all of that, then you have greater opportunity for accessibility. Right. I like what you mentioned, um, don't let your disability define you. I like that part that you mentioned. Um, so moving from that, just to tie with that question, how do you believe in your piece fits into this year's theme and campaign? So that piece I created to really speak to almost feeling oppressed in terms of not having access to communication. So when you look at disability in general, we talk about accessibility, but this is communication. And within the disability of deafness, language, communication, however the modality may be, is really the key thing. So when the pandemic hit us and everything became closed off, so whether we were isolated in our homes, we worked from home, but communication for me literally came to a standstill. I just could not even, I think I was reminded of my disability and I actually go day in and day out of not thinking about my disability because I don't let it define me. And it was very much literally in my face, um, even though I couldn't see anyone else with the mask on. And so when I created that piece, I really wanted to convey those feelings that I had of what it's like to have a person or be a person rather with a disability and be having just all these experiences of emotions, which like I said, day in and day out, I don't experience because I've come so far from where I was as a child with a disability, going to a deaf school, being mainstream, just going through all of those experiences and then really coming to terms with myself as a person with a disability, but again, not letting that define me. And all of a sudden that stopped and I said, I can't see you, I can't hear you. Um, and then kind of feeling that sense of hopelessness, helplessness, not my confidence really, really took a back seat. And um, it was a lot, it was a lot for everybody, regardless of where you where you were at at that time. Um, but that painting, and it's larger than life. It's literally, it's like about four feet by three feet. I mean, it's a big painting. And I just put everybody in there. And when I saw the flyer for artists to submit a painting and thinking about the theme this year for the agency, I said, you know, that is exactly it. Because when you look at the painting, it speaks to diversity. So it's not necessarily just deafness, but all disabilities, wearing all different colors and being different colors. It didn't matter. You know, not everybody is the same, but that we're all in it together. And um, and that's, I think that was really the crux of it in terms of it portraying diversity and disability. Awesome. Um, yeah, COVID really did, oh, I'm sorry. I'm hoping that the dog is not a disturbance. But um, yeah, COVID did took a toll on everyone. 
Um, so I just want to like shift gear a little bit more and talk about your experience. Um, do you believe you have incorporated your experience into artwork? And if so, how? Yes. So, you know, I think in general, in terms of how artists uh, create, one of the things that I think is important for the artist to ponder and decide is, uh, for example, for me, am I creating this for myself or am I doing this for you? Because I think when we think about, is it good enough? Um, basically, is it good enough? Um, the people like my art. But I think really when it comes down to, in terms of incorporating your own self, you really need to do it for you because everything that you're feeling, thinking, um, maybe there's a specific message you want to put out there. I mean, it could be the most abstract piece, but it's okay because it's your own message and it's up to everybody else because art is extremely subjective and um, can be interpreted in a million different ways. But I think having a disability, this particular one has deafness, hard of hearing, we're very visual folks. We are always looking, we're always saying, let me see, because I need to get that information. I need to know and use it as a, a gauge to determine what's happening, who is, who is thinking what, how do I figure out the situation? How do I navigate? How do I proceed? So all of this is relying on my visual senses and just really, um, so it's that outlook. And um, so I think it's that visual piece that goes back into internalizing my um, own perceptions and feelings. And it's a good fit for me because I enjoy art, like I said, from my earlier exposure. And um, I think it's a phenomenal tool for using art in terms of conveying a lot of messages as art is, um, you know, one of the tenets of art is what are you, what are you conveying? So for me, um, it's about that. And I didn't have a solo show one year and I made the whole thing about my disability and each piece, literally I titled my emotions, thinking about situational occurrences, events, that may have dealt with oppression, misunderstanding, sadness, joy, I mean, any of those things related to my disability. And I put that onto the canvas and I gave it a title that really addressed that specific emotion. Great, I love, actually that's beautiful. Um, so I wanna ask the next question. Can you speak any? Can you speak about any specific projects or pieces of art where where your experience played a significant role in the creative process? I would have to say um, the piece that was chosen for the agency to represent the World of Opportunities theme this year really is my most powerful one. It's it's the one that I've really connected with at the most. Um, I have some ongoing projects in the works. I do um, projects for fundraisers, but I also do projects for shows or group works. Um, I haven't really talked about what kind of projects I do, or but really the media that I use primarily is um, mosaic, which is glasswork. And I also do encaustic which is a, an old art form where you use Damar resin that's mixed with pigment of oil and create this beautiful piece, um, the paint, but you can't use it on canvas. It has to be on block because it'll bulge otherwise. And you use a heat gun or a blowtorch and you fuse it in. And it's very um, it's freeing. And uh, it's just phenomenal because you've got all your senses, you know, you can smell the wax and um, and it's, it's, it's 
temperamental in a way because you they can go this way, they can go that way, just like watercolor. Um, but it's fun. So those, those are the two things that I actually do that you don't see because this is a painting that I use both oil and acrylic. So, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I have another question. So what do you think is the role of art in advocating for disability rights and raising awareness about accessibility issues? Right, good question. So I think that, um, as I was saying before, art can be used as a tool for sending messages. And what is it that you really want to focus on? Um, and I think that art as a way to communicate with people, I think is more, it's more accessible. Um, you may have somebody that may not communicate in your language. Um, you may not have somebody who is a good reader, um, proficient reader. So how can we best get this information across? You have art. And, and I love that there are no rules. You can be free to break out stretch your boundaries and uh they're just, just it's limitless in terms of um how you want to create a piece and get that message across so i really think using art is a very powerful tool and um it really um kind of get gets rid of all of the challenges in terms of accessibility and i really believe that um then I it's just it's just open to everybody. It's subjective, but um, you'll get something out of it, whether you don't like it or you love it, or it makes you feel something that you want to explore or enjoy at the moment. Yeah, no, I believe that um, art is definitely an expression. Um, so, as an artist, right, what challenges do you encounter, and how do you navigate through them? Okay, so I continually have challenges with communication. Um, my hearing aids are not robotic in the sense that they will allow me to hear everything every day. Um, I utilize facial expressions. Um, I read lips. I, I'm looking at captioning right now. Um, the interpreter is wonderful. Anything that I can get to help me to understand. And I would have to say that's the biggest challenge is the lack of 100% understanding because my own disability does not allow me to have that 100%. So with that being said, I take steps day in and day out and advocate for myself. So if something is not happening, whether it is if I go to the movies, I always get captioned glasses. I will not see a movie at all or any TV show unless it has captioning. That's just, that's my limit. And because I feel the frustration, I feel and I know if I miss something and I feel that it's not just, it's not fair because I should have 100% access. So that's kind of what I still have to navigate day in and day out, no matter how many good tools I have under my belt, how good of a self-advocate I am. Um, it's ongoing, and but that's okay. And I really feel confident in myself to be able to let people know, hey, this is what will help me, and can we do it this way? Um, same thing with strategic seating at meetings. I show up early, you know, I... I'm famous for being um, the early bird that gets the worm because I have to scope out the room. I ask the presenter, where will you be? So I can situate myself. Um, it's just these are the things that can be challenging, but yeah. you are in a place where you can self-advocate even better. Mm -hmm. 
Honestly, that's um, amazing to hear, especially about the captioning. That's true about the captioning part when watching like television or any movies or anything of that sort. Um, so can you describe your artistic style and how it has evolved over the years? Well, I was thinking about how, you know, people change, then your art will change because it's really coming from within. And I really hope that um, for anybody that how they do things will change because you grow, you mature, you may have better strategies that you work with in order to make things more accessible to you in this world. Um, so I was looking at my art and I thought, okay, so I started out drawing and then I went to, um, painting acrylic and uh, I did that, both of those, for a long time. But when I was 16, I did my first oil painting. And then in my 20s, I kind of um, took a back seat to art because I was doing graduate school and teaching. And then finally, my 30s, I just hit the ground running and I was completely doing art and taking art classes. So I think that as people grow, I would hope that they allow themselves more um, opportunities to learn about different mediums of art. Um, There's a wonderful world that we live in, in terms of different types of art. And it's not just, um, it's fine arts, it's dancing, it's writing, it's anything, performance, art. It's so it's a variety of art. And I just so I think that's how it's changed because it's not that you get better, but it's that you're more true with yeah. yourself. And that hopefully is reflected in the art that you do. Awesome. Because I do have a little cousin that actually does art herself, but she changes her mind every every now and then about um painting. Um, so finally, um, my last question is: What advice would you offer to those who inspire to you know pursue a career in art? Well, I would recommend first of all, do not fret, do not be worried about the fact that if you do not have an art degree, you can still be an artist. Everybody is an artist. Everybody has the potential to make art. Um, you know, if you've had that art teacher in school where they said, do not color outside the lines, it's okay, color outside the lines. Um, you know, there's, there's room, of course, for formal teaching. And there's also room for informal that you can learn on your own through YouTube. You can um, take local classes at your community college or people are always advertising these kind of classes. Um, so yeah, just go ahead and pick up a paintbrush or break some glass to do a beautiful mosaic. Um, go with a friend to a class, maybe just take a, go to a craft store in town and buy yourself a, um, a pad of paper and some good pencils and go to a park and just draw away. I mean, it just, or even a coffee shop and do some drawing. Um, so uh, that's my recommendation, but again, who are you doing this for? Are you doing it for you or are you doing it for somebody else? And don't worry about if it's not good enough because if it makes you happy, that's number one. Yeah, that is um that is true. But um thank you so much again for coming in today, Lee Waters. I'm gonna open this part for any questions and answers, or I'm gonna pass it on to Raffle. Rafa, are you there? I am here. If you have any questions, be sure to raise your hand or put them in the chat. Um, Eric Berg and I will be keeping an eye on this in the meantime, I believe.
If there is, we'll give a few more minutes, if there, a few more seconds. If there is definitely no questions, it looks like so. Then I think it's fair to close out, then I would say. Um, okay, well, I guess we're going to close out then. Um, we're going to thank you. Um, I'm going to start off by saying thank you everyone again for taking part in this event. Abigail, thank you so much for moderating this event as well. Lee, as well, thank you so much for being the artist for this year's DDM campaign. It's been a pleasure to see your artwork all throughout the month. Um, and thank you to our ASL interpreter for taking part in this event as well. Um, I have no other words in case Abby or Lee, is there anything else you need to say before we close out for the good of the order? Thank you. Awesome. Okay, well, I was going to say thank, thank you, guys. you, Lee, for coming. <laughs> thank you for moderating. No problem. Thank you. Well, like like we said, this recording will go live by next week at the latest. So be sure to check back our YouTube, and we will be sure that this is on our social media as well. And thank you guys again for taking part and happy Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month to you all. And let's continue to create a world of opportunities for everybody, not just during the month of March, but throughout the whole year. Thank you guys again. Bye, everyone. Bye.